Yeah, it looks like we're live. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Let me just double check. Okay, and I can see Hi everyone, that. if you see that we're live, give us a thumbs up or send a comment and say hashtag live. We're just trying out Zoom for Facebook Live for the first time, so figuring it all out. Okay, you've shared the post, cool. It seems I've shared the previous post. <laughs> so I'm just figuring this out myself as well. Okay, I'm going to share this onto Ben's Business Book Club as well, and then we'll get started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so everyone that's joining us just now, welcome to Ben's Business Podcast, episode number 96. Today I'm here with Naz Hack, and we actually met in London after Super Genius, uh, which is a workshop we both attended on, well, we did it it's about super consciousness and understanding unconscious mind, but we had a great chat and conversation, and I suggested that Naz came on for a conversation on, on the podcast. Uh, because we just kind of sat there for maybe two to th maybe three hours and uh, I just listened to Naz and uh, it kind of blew my mind. Um, so when you know, when you've been seeking wisdom like like us uh, and you come across someone that's got wisdom, you, you know it. So that's that's why what I do. I end up finding top performers and bring them on to Ben's Business Podcast. It's not just about business, it's about your mind and business, so growing your mind and your business. So Naz, you want to give a quick introduction and just tell us like, what are you? Uh, what, how, uh, what would you call yourself? And, and, and like kind of take us on the journey, like wh how you got to where you are today, because today, looking at you, today you look like a successful entrepreneur, business owner, living a, a good lifestyle uh, from, from my perspective, uh, very well uh, experienced and educated. So take us on that journey and like explain all of that, who, who you are and what, you, what you've what you done to get to where you are today. Um, and I'll get this shared onto all the groups. Cool, thank you, Ben. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for in inviting me into your community and giving me the opportunity to share value with everyone here. Um, you've asked me a lot of interesting questions. Um, first of all, who am I? Uh, it's going to sound flaky, but um, I believe I'm a soul having a human experience. I'm one of those woo-woo guys. And there's you know something greater than what we all see and feel and, and experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, my Where I'm right now in life, so mainly I work as, as a business and marketing coach. Um, first and foremost, working on the mindset. Uh, I believe the, the greatest limiter to the growth of businesses is usually the, the business owners themselves, where they end up working in the business instead of on the business and the where the sabotage comes is in where the sabotage comes in is where they limit their growth um, and i've got to that stage through my own experiences through my own lessons and through my own discoveries um, where i am now uh, i've you know i'm very fortunate the life that i live now and what i've uh, got to achieve and i'm very thankful for that every single day um, a long time ago in a land far away once upon a time, there was three wise men just around Christmas Day that uh, went to uh, you know a very quiet place and a baby was born. We're not talking about Jesus in Bethlehem. We're talking about myself, born on Christmas Day in Bangladesh. Um, so I was born in a third world country at that time. The country would have been about 15 years old. Uh, I came from a real third world situation. Um, and that I, I consider them that now a blessing. Um, in the fact that I came over to the UK at a relatively young age, didn't fit in um, and had to go off, off through my own devices, learn the best way to live my life. And, you know, like many of us, took some wrong decisions and I had some great mentors and people who were looking out for me who helped me to pivot to be back on the right path. Um, 
turned my life around. I would say going into my um, early 20s, that decade of my life, I was working as a consultant for various blue chip corporations. Um, so this is a, a very, very long time ago. It's a different life for me, but uh, my clients were the likes of Cisco, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, some of the top global blue chip corporations. And 2000s was very, very good. Coming into about 2008, the recession came in and I started to fall out of love with that industry. I've always been in tech, marketing, sales, um, projects. Uh, 2008, I wasn't very happy with how the big companies were getting rid of people. They had reasons for doing so, but it didn't resonate with my values and I became very disillusioned. And that started me on uh, a journey of discovery, looking inwards, you know, where I'd just gone into, you know, climbing as high as I could, making as much money as I could. I found that it wasn't fulfilling my my soul, my purpose. And uh, I went on a journey of self-discovery, personal development, and turned that around to now where I am today. I work mainly with small to medium business owners, agencies. I'm a partner in a couple of businesses and agencies. And um, I'm, I'm an investor in quite a few companies. So sometimes you have to take a, a step back and realize, wow, you know, this is where I came from, from nothing. Um, and I'm very blessed what I have now, but I know there's more. There's a lot more to be achieved because when you achieve that, then you can give it to others. You can share. When I go, you know, I'm not going to take any of this with me, right? So that's where you're, from my experience here, I'm, I'm just giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. Because if we all learn more and share more, the world becomes a better place. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's really like, I, I didn't know that. And again, this is a, this is kind of like why I wanted to get this kind of conversation started again as well, because we never really got to like uh, asking a, a lot about you. We just started talking about uh, like sort of all our interests and we were, we'd come from obviously super genius and uh, talking about super consciousness and, then into the investing and, and things like that. So it's, it's good to connect the dots and and see where you've come from, like that, and let let my audience see anyone that's watching see that it's possible mm-hmm. because you've come from here and you've got to here. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I want them to, I want people to see that. I, that's what what I'm doing with the podcast. It is about very much about giving, mm-hmm. um, sharing my my own wisdom and my guest wisdom, uh, and just giving people that inspiration and hope that there's a better life out there. There's, there's a, the failures, the, the, the trials they're going through are actually a kind of part of the process. And, and all the people that we see that seem successful have been through that or have come out the other side of that. Mm-hmm. But there's always something that we're, we're, there's always something challenging and it's just given that, putting that out there and letting people see that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe all these challenges are opportunities to grow yeah. our character. You're only as great as your character. So every single time you have these, what we perceive at that stage to be a dark episode, know for a fact that's going to grow you. You know, wherever you are right now, if you look back at your past experiences and you could easily say, look, that was a, you know, a challenging episode in my life. But for sure, if you look back at it now and you say, well, actually, I'm capable of far more than that. And it's only because of that, that event, you've been able to grow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I seen your post on Instagram the other day when I, well, today when I was uh, stalking you to get some ideas for this podcast, um, it was, you can take your failures or challenges as a, uh, I think it was a, a blockage or a stepping mm-hmm. stone. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's so true mm-hmm. because there is times where a challenge comes and it, it can it can go through people's head to just give up at that point. But mm-hmm. it's that point where if you get to the other side of that, the the lesson is as something's more valuable than, than a success or an achievement. If mm-hmm. you can take that mindset and really uh, use it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, at, at any given moment, something is always happening and it's down to us to choose how we're going to react to that. I mean, for example, right now, um, we've just had um, a very important um, event happening in the UK election. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a lot of people who are very, very disillusioned about the, the results. And some people are very ecstatic. Now, whichever side you're on, you can, you know, you can sit and, you know, you can complain. I'm being mindful to watch my language, but you can, you can complain about the outcome. Now, you can spend all your time complaining or you can ask yourself the two most vital questions. What does this mean for me and what am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm. What does this mean for me? And what am I going to do with this? And that's with anything in life. Yeah. If you, there's a result which you, you know, you didn't get your desired end result at that stage. Well, that's a different story. Because, you know, if if you were on purpose um, and you take responsibility for that happens, you know, there's, there's something else there. But if we're not getting what we wanted, we've got to ask ourselves, instead of sitting around and complaining, what does this mean to me? And what am I going to do about this? And only then can you, make a change and get what you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a really powerful question. So I want to jump back to kind of your experience from the corporate world, doing tech, market and sales, and what you talked about, that you're fulfilling your soul and your purpose. There, there was obviously a point where you were dissatisfied and you just wanted to change completely. Mm -hmm. So what was going through your head then and like what what really made you take action and just start to uh, to look for change to look for something mm -hmm. different that's a really good question um there was a, a period in my life just before i decided to leave that world where you could say you know i, I look back at it now I, I went through a phase of depression okay um you know the the business that I were in, I, you know, I was really, really fortunate for where I've, I've come from to where I was. And I was always grateful and I still am grateful for every experience I've had. And what I was finding was I was going from growing businesses to reducing businesses in terms right. of, you know, not saying a particular name, but a, a major blue chip was sending me to one of their sites. And, uh, you know, at that time, I'm, I'm a 23, 24 year old guy. I'm in the office at a remote site for a week, observing all the staff people who have been establishing that business for a long time and deciding potentially at the end of the week, who am I going to get rid of? Right. And there's, you know, this is, you know, we're talking about places like Bristol at that stage, you know, there isn't a lot going on Blackpool and there's, I'm going to be having a conversation with a 45 year old man telling him he's being dismissed. And this is a 23 year old. And I, I learned very well at that stage to shut off my emotions and to see this just as a bulk job and I'm just doing my duty. But what I wasn't aware of at that stage and I'm aware of now is that when we suppress our emotions, eventually they'll, they'll bite us. You know, there'll be, there'll be some pain. You cannot deny your emotions as long, as much as you try and bottle them up, eventually it will blow up. So that over the weekends I was doing things to escape. That was my coping mechanism all human beings we have different ways of um managing the tension um i i, I call them the four d's delay, delay denial doubt and distract so on the weekends i was distracting myself from the pain the tension and it was an unhealthy lifestyle and uh, i was very fortunate i i managed to but i went away for a family member's wedding I went to another country, I changed my environment, I changed my scene. And from being in an environment where there's so much um, negativity and hostility to be somewhere with so much love and abundance. And it reminds me of how life should be. And when I came back, I decided, no, this isn't for me, for me anymore. Um, I'm not going to be, you know, no offense, I'm not going to be a corporate sellout. Um, I'm not just going to do things for money anymore. Because it's, it's fine getting paid good money, but if it's compromising your values, which I wasn't aware of that stage, I was yet to discover what my values were, but I, I could, I could see I was not happy there. I decided I needed to change. And then I started my journey. Yeah. Right. Okay. So was it the, the, the pivotal moment was the change of environment then? Yes. I would say that's the biggest catalyst. Um, it's, it's more so when I came back because, you know, right. It's, it's like the, the frog in the boiling water. You don't realize you're mm -hmm. being boiled whilst you're in yeah. there. So to, to come out, see something great, and then to be then thrown back into that boiling water, yeah, that would have been the catalyst. The, yeah. the awareness happened by changing the environment, and then the decision to take action and taking the action happened when I came back in. Yeah. 
And what was the first action you took? <laughs> Handing you my remember? notice in. Uh, yes, I remember. I was in a, and it was a boardroom and uh, a, a, a colleague was getting bullied. They were a part-timer. Um, and obviously because of their availability to have less time than me, there was, you know, my assumption here, they were seen as a lower resource. Yeah. Um, and the company just wanted to save money. And, you know, I wasn't down for that. And I said, look, if, you, if you're really, if you want to save money and you want someone out, I'll give you six weeks. I appreciate I've just come from holiday. I'll give you six weeks. And they were very, very shocked with that. I was very shocked with that myself. Yeah. But I, I, you know, enough was enough. Mm -hmm. and, and what, so it seems like, it seems more so that you were sick of the sort of corporate emotionless money driven uh, mm -hmm. society. And yeah. I definitely see a lot of that and no offense when I'm down in London as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so rushed and uh, there is like a, in a lot of cases, there's a lot of that going on and mm -hmm. it's not for me. I grew up in, in a very nice place in Scotland and I see it like I see the, the contrast in some cases, the lifestyle. Some people live in London and um, it's, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. um, it never has been for me, uh, but I can see how it's very easy to get sucked into that mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of lose yourself in yeah. the process. Yes. So um, what made you kind of get back into doing sort of business, marketing, coaching and SEO? Because that's very technical and going, mm -hmm. going back into the business world. So like coming from this new, fresh perspective and back in, mm -hmm what what was a what kind of perspective are you bringing to um this world now mm -hmm. so it's a really good question um my journey with all of this even going into the the consulting world uh, i was very very fortunate um i've always been I've been, always been blessed with a technical mind. Um, when I was 15 in high school, um, at that stage, there wasn't much IT support available, small businesses. And at that, you know, at that age of my life, I was working weekends um, doing IT support for companies. So while most kids would have been in a paper round, I was doing IT support and I was paid very, very handsomely for that. And you know how in, in this day and age we have um, uh, hot desking community office spaces like WeWork and Regis and so forth? Yeah. Um, so, so back then I was working in those environments and it was essentially a hotspot for entrepreneurs and I saw them enjoying themselves and making money and grafting and I've always been up for grafting that's you know uh, you know you could say an immigrant mentality our parents teach us we have to work if you're Asian and you're 14 there's no pocket money go out there and make some money um, so that always you know created desire but I also saw the satisfaction the small business owners would take um, you know, that payment, that contract, that dividend was going to be paying for their, them to spend time with their family, to put their children through college. So it's, it was, you, was, you could, you know, you could immediately see what difference that would make to the individual. But in the corporate world, you wouldn't see that. Right. So I, I've always gravitated towards helping people. And, you know, when, when I came out of the corporate world and I was asking myself, what do I want to do? You have to ask yourself, you know, what, what do I enjoy? And eventually at that stage, I, I came across, you know, without realizing a concept nowadays called the Ikigai. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard of it. So, so, you know, for anybody who's not heard of looked at it, I strongly recommend you, you read up about the Ikigai. Um, there's a, a, a small Japanese island which has the, the largest amount of centenarians in the world, people who live above the age of 100. Right. And they live a life um, based on purpose. The Ikigai comes from this island. Uh, um, I can't remember the name of the island now. It fails me. Um, but the, everyone there, over the age of 100, more or less. And it comes down to the four core values. What am I good at? What do I enjoy? What will I get paid for? And what does the world need? What am I good at? What do I enjoy? What will I get paid for? And what, will the, what does the world need? And when you look at yourself and you put all of those together mm -hmm. and you find your strengths and you go out in a direction and tap into each one of those segments, you start finding more fulfillment. Mm -hmm. There may be dark days and chapters in your journey. And 
usually that's just us creating that because of, of our thoughts and our perceptions and being attached to the outcomes that we want. And you learn to detach from that and be on passion mm-hmm. and go through the journey, then you become light again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that the concept of Ikigai is like being very... I've never read up into it too much, but I understand those f- the, the four parts of it and mm-hmm. realize just how much what you need one you can't mm-hmm. you can't have one of those pillars missing because yes. one like if it's, it's if it's you can't be rewarded for it financially then you're you're quite happy with how you're spending your time but you've got no money and mm-hmm. then that just causes all all the problems or that it's impossible to live in london for example with no <laughs> money so yeah. uh you yeah you this concept's been something i've been using uh, and and moving into visions and passions passion mm-hmm. projects that i can see actually yeah that this is like kind of an ikigai it's got all those elements and it's quite exciting when you find this thing that you can you can do for the rest of your life mm-hmm. yeah because absolutely it, it, it ticks all the boxes yeah yeah i, I, I believe recommend there's... people keep searching until they find that yeah actually i believe there's a lot of wisdom from the ages that we need to look at. Um, I've recalled now the island is called Okinawa, not that it matters. Um, right. But there's a, there's a lot of lot of wisdom through the ages. And you know, if we ever get to a point where mm-hmm. we're stuck, we need to remember we are not alone. More than likely someone's walked this path, they've been through this journey. So who's done it well and who can we learn from? Instead of trying to recreate the, the recipe every single time, recreate the wheel, who's got the recipe that we can take and use and put us into a, into a better place. And what I love about the, the Ikigai, it's about creating balance. And surely, you know, I imagine, I may be wrong, but I imagine all of us would love some balance in our life. Yeah. Yeah, that I never thought about it that way, but yeah, it's creating balance. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas you, like, you talked about the, the corporate world or when I get when I was younger and, and I've been doing business for uh, eight, eight, nine years now. And mm-hmm. there was periods in, in that time where I was out of balance completely. Mm-hmm. I was like all, all in on uh, money generating activities yeah. and um, family health to the side. And it, mm-hmm. it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't yes. work in the long term. Uh, mm-hmm. Very similar to your experience in the uh, being roped into that sort of corporate world. And yeah. 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 Um, so I think I would like to go into a couple of topics. There's so many angles we could go. Um, there's, there's, I'll just give you an idea where like, I see this conversation going. Sure. Now. Uh, we both do SEO, which is, it could be a very interesting topic. Mm-hmm. Um, potentially talking about some of the latest sort of SEO trends that you see um, what what we can do in terms of our search ranking on Google and mm-hmm. for 2020, like going forward into the new year um, mm-hmm. and any tips on SEO. Then mm-hmm. like I, I, we had a good conversation about sort of meditation and how you're kind of uh, tracking your brain waves and our friend Ver is also, Veer is also doing that as well. Mm-hmm. He's got, what is it called? Amuse or EEG Amuse, machine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You track your brain waves, and I, yes. I've been looking into ever since you, you talked about that. I, I looked into that. So SEO, meditation, and also finance and investing, and I find, find found all those areas that we talked about in our conversation really interesting. So um, in terms of SEO, mm-hmm. so I've, I've given you a summary of like what I see, like kind of ideas, sure. or questions, and things that I have uh, to give give us an idea of the structure. Because mm-hmm. if we don't structure this, it could go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. Like in the cafe. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what? What about SEO? Two thousand two thousand twenty. Let's see. Two thousand. What, what do you see f- that will work best in terms of ranking higher? High, ranking a small business owners watching this. What mm-hmm. should they do in two thousand twenty to rank their mm-hmm. website higher? What's oh. like most effective one thing that you could sure. do so the, the i would say the critical point more than anything else for small business owners is getting yourself onto the google my business listings mm-hmm. so i'm going to assume for a moment most of these small business owners are selling uh services it's a service run business you're not selling a product 
you know, even if you, you have a cafe and you have, you know, a bangers and mash and English breakfast and teas and coffees, it's a service. Um, and the majority of your client base is going to be within your location. And it might be a transient audience, someone comes in and does a search on Google, it might be word of mouth. And guess what word of mouth leads on to a Google search. So whatever it is, you want to be found for your business. So there's a w wonderful tool um, called uh, Google My Business Listing, GMB. Mm -hmm. And you can do a search on Google for the GMB and make sure you claim your business listing. This is a free tool. It's, you know, it's a bit of a no brainer for all business to have this. We really need to understand the value of Google. And, it, I, you know, I'm just going to go on a slight dialogue related to this in case anyone is not familiar with SEO, first of all, because I appreciate we've gone into a, you know, a high level technical question and I'm not sure of the, you know, the, the knowledge of the audience with this. When, Whenever anyone recommends a product or a service, more than likely we're going to go into Google. That is where, yeah. you know, the largest, uh, that's the largest marketplace in the world in this day and age. And what, what we have to understand about Google is Google does not care about you or me. Google doesn't care about your business or my business. Google only cares about its customers. Google is not the internet. Google is a library which holds all the websites and web pages that it reads. So when people search on Google, they're not searching on the internet, they're searching in Google's library. And if it's in a library, you want to be found at the top of the library, right? Well, let's understand the rules of the library and let's be found at the top. So if someone is looking for a plumber in Edinburgh, what's the rules? Do we appear within Google's business system? Well, an easy way is the Google My Business listing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then within the Google My Business listing, put a description, put a category in there, put some information about your business. There is a factor uh, called um, NAP, name, address, phone number. Mm -hmm. So all local businesses need to ensure they have that plus the website. So if you have um, a SSL certificate, that's the padlock sign at the top start of your website address, um, make sure your website address on your GMB listing, your Google buying listing has that as well. In this day and age, you need to have that SSL certificate everywhere. That is one of the factors in the 200 plus um, elements in the Google recipe for ranking high up. Now, when someone does a search on Google, there are three areas typically we see results. At the top, there are ads. And statistically on average, no more than 30% of people click on the ads. How, how do you prove this? Well, ask yourself, when I do a search, how often do I click on the ads? Not often, right? Yeah. The next place is the map listings. Between 23 to 33% of all people will click on those map listings. And the only way you're going to get onto those map listings, first of all, is if you have the Google business listing. So it's a bit of a no-brainer to be there. And the next is the organic listings. Now, the organic listings can take time. And the organic listings are the 10 listings below. But, you know, we're just focusing on this, um, the, the business listings. Once you have your listing... You want to make sure it's connected to your website. And uh, going back to what I said, another NAP name, address, phone number is consistent on your business listing as well on your website. It's appearing on all the relevant pages on your website. And if you have any other directory listings, so a Facebook business page, a Twitter business page, a Yelp Twitter business page, these are called citations, have the same consistent information, your business hours, everything. What will happen is Google will come to your website, find the information and a link to your business listing and your various other social media profiles start reading this consistent information and become educated about your business and also understand that you are a plumber in edinburgh and that gives you a higher chance of appearing there once you have your business listing the next step is focus on google reviews 91 percent of consumers sorry 93 percent of consumers are most likely to look at a review before they decide to buy and this just comes down to human psychology as human beings, we are risk averse and we don't like to make bad decisions. Going back to the time when we used to be in our caves sitting around the fire, if Fred Flintstone went out and he didn't come back, we know a dinosaur was eating him. It's not good. If Barney went out and came back and said, here's uh, a bush and there's some berries, he's given us his word of mouth feedback and we'll go there and get that. Yeah. So it's that, you know, it, it's, it's that inherent within us. So we need to get that feedback and the, and that now is online, your Google reviews. When you have created your business listing, the moment someone does a search for you, your business on the right-hand side, you should appear there. You should own 25% of page one 
for your business and all your reviews. And the first impression is being made on Google, not on your website. So make sure you've got lots of great reviews. That's the yeah. n- number one critical point for all, all small businesses. Yep. And, and I can 100% second that. That's the first place I would get a, a um, local business service to, to look at and um, check. First thing, have they got a Google My Business list? So to go summarize what you just said, get yourself a Google My Business listing, which is free. Yep. Any, the, the NEP, name, address, and phone number. Yeah. Should all be consistent and yes. uploaded into directories, like free business directories submissions. Yeah and yeah. put them into sort of Yale, Yelp, all these free ones. And, yes. and then maybe 20, I always suggest 20. And then <laughs> that's called also known as citations and then mm-hmm. get Google reviews for word of mouth recommendations. Yes. So yes. that's that's some really good advice there for yeah. business owners. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you are a little bit more technical, um, look at something called schema. Schema, yep. Schema, so, um, you know, about six years ago, all the search engines got together and they said, look, we, we, you know, I'm um, putting words in the mouth, but essentially they're saying, you know, we're tired of using all our computational power to figure out what's on websites. We need to understand what's on a website very, very easily. So the English language, you know, it's, it's a construct and we define a meaning to each word. And the same thing with websites and web language, there has to be a meaning to characters. So schema is meanings defined by the search engines, which tells them that this piece of text has a specific value. Like this piece of text is a business name. It's a business address, phone number, and so forth. So there's something called business schema. And you can just do a search on Google for schema.org and do a search for if your business appears there. So if you're a plumber, you're a dentist, you're a hairdresser, so forth. And if you don't find something specific to your niche, look for what's the most relevant top level so it might be small business or local business and find that schema which is relevant to yourself and put that on your website because it makes it even easier for the search engines to understand your website is a business and that's a brownie point that the other websites which are are not providing and you're saving the search engine it's computing power to read and understand your website okay yeah yeah that's that's good tip as well um the, the first one will be uh, more sort of general ge- uh, general and broad for, for everyone. And mm-hmm. the second one's for the, the, the techies that want to go yes. deep, deeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. In one line, what is your best marketing tip for business owners? Best marketing tip for business owners is make sure you, you over-deliver. Under-promise, over-deliver. If you create raving fans, they will bring business to you. Yeah. Yeah. So the, it's not about the promotion and mm-hmm. the getting new customers. It's about creating loyal clients that will yeah. uh, shout about you and, and do the marketing for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. More than likely, they will transact even further with you. So most business owners think very much about, let me just fill the funnel in. Imagine we've got a funnel here. Yeah. an inverted triangle and they just put more and more at the top of it and eventually that becomes a, a tiresome exercise well instead of putting more and more into it how do we get more out of it yes so yes. if you can give so much value and service to someone who's in there surely they would transact more with you mm-hmm. yeah yeah 100%, you don't, yeah you don't have to spend your time looking for more customers you focus on the ones that you have love them look after them yeah. and you know it's a win-win for everyone yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's very easy to just chase the next prospect instead of uh, developing what you've already looked like, appreciating and growing what you've already got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Meditation now, uh, <laughs> and and let's let's go into that rabbit hole of uh, super consciousness. So, yeah. um, we both went to Ryan Pinnock's workshops, and what you've done, you've probably done them all of them as well. <laughs> yes. um, so what is like for the general general viewers who might not have even looked into what, what consciousness is, mm-hmm. how would you describe it from your perspective? Like what, what, what we learned at Super Genius is and how is that practical for you as a, a human being, as a person, mm-hmm as well as a business owner and mm-hmm. a, a uh, say a friend 
mm-hmm. uh, and relationships and, and everything. Mm-hmm. Like how, how, how can we use that in the practical world? What mm-hmm. you've learned at the Super Genius mm-hmm. and, and, and in your whole discovery, not just Super Genius, but in uh, Super Consciousness and your, mm-hmm. your research in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll say meditation has uh, changed my life for sure. Um, you know, some, some people pray and some people meditate. One is asking the universe for things. And the other one is uh, giving things to the universe. Okay. Um, and we often, it's, it's very easy to live life on a day-to-day basis, just running through the same sequence, running through the same routine and becoming lost. It's very easy for us to do our day-to-day and never take a moment to actually realize the, the power of our actions and our interactions. And that is living life unconsciously. And we can often have the same experience again and again and again. And it's only when we take a moment, take a step back and you know, look at ourselves and what we're doing, we realize and then we can change the results that we have in our life. Surely you would want to have that. So, you know, meditation, super consciousness has, has enabled me to have the tools and techniques to build better relationships with, with clients, with friends and family, but most importantly, with myself. And that's, you know, that's been invaluable for me. I, you know, I've not always been the, the Zen peaceful person that you see now, um, but I, I've only been able to achieve that by learning to be kind to myself. And I, I feel like we could all do with a bit of that. Yeah, I agree. So you're putting it out into the world because you've kind of done it for yourself first is what you're kind of saying. Yeah. By yeah. being kinder to yourself and <laughs> understanding yourself. And then that reflects in the sort of like the way you express yourself by uh, mm-hmm. really understanding how you work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, every single day, the first decision you have to make is what kind of person do I want to be today? And often we don't even think about that. It's unconsciously, our behavior just comes out. You know, I'm that stressed father running around, looking after my kids, making sure that I can feed them and do the school run. And then I'm that stressed employee, um, you know, dealing with the deadlines and pressures and so forth. And, you know, that's just doing things. That's just doing. And life isn't about doing, it's about being. So if we take a moment and decide how do we want to be in the world and what do we want to give to the world, then we find we have a better experience of life. And, you know, you could say a a balanced, but more importantly, a a greater, more joyful experience of life. You know, I I shared that I was born in, in Bangladesh and I go back often. And, the, you know, the greatest experiences of peace and beauty I see from, you know, the village that I was born in, it's, you know, it's a very, very poor village. And I see people out there who have nothing. They live day to day, but they live moment by moment and they're cherishing every single moment. They're so present They're you know, they have so much happiness and we live here where we're chasing, you know, I want to get that car, get that house, get that property, get this, get the latest handbag. And we're just doing and doing for the sake of having things which we, we don't fulfill us. Now, over there, you know, Bangladesh is a very religious country. They, they pray. That's their form of meditation. They're asking, but they're connecting and they're creating a cultivation of discipline to live a, a, a way of life. Now, with meditation, you know, you don't have to follow uh, a god or a deity or whoever, but again, you create the mindset, mindset of deciding who do you want to be and focus and be disciplined. And whenever you have the, the moments, you learn to reset. You don't have to wait until New Year's Eve to create resolutions for, for resetting. You can reset right now. You just press reset and that's it, you're done. Yeah, uh, I had you on mute there. I had myself on mute there to <laughs> yes. uh, avoid my uh, daughter's voice coming through. But, um, yeah, that that is a really good point. Like, I, I don't agree with like New Year's resolutions in the slightest, mm-hmm. and even more so from what we've been learning yes. uh, together in a way, over the last, uh, for me, the last year especially, I've been really understanding uh, mm-hmm. that change can just happen in this moment, right now, if I if I want to, and 
yeah. just the ability of how meditation you can go into your unconscious mind and your unconscious mind is like what's making you perform 80% of your actions in, yeah. in your day to day. So if you're operating like unconsciously, aka unaware, mm-hmm. but you can go into that program that's making you act mm-hmm. and change it through meditation. That's mm-hmm. what's been really my big realization about meditation this yeah. year is mm-hmm. just that ability that, okay, we are almost, we can, a lot of us, a lot of the time we are unconscious. We're unconsciously yeah. doing things by habit. So yes. we can create change by changing our programming of our unconscious. Yes. And that was uh, like my big aha this like, yeah. last few yeah. uh, few months uh, around meditation. So I would like yeah. to know your thoughts about that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, I'll give you an analogy. I mean, I'm assuming all of us know about phones and computers, and we know that a computer or phone is a piece of hardware and there's a piece of software, be it Android, Windows, um, iOS. And just like that, we as human beings, we have hardware and software. Okay? So the software is our belief systems and the hardware is us and the, you know, how we operate. And these are the programs. So the program might be your behavior and it's based on your belief system. So there is a, a four stage process which governs behavior. So for example, when you learn to drive, I don't know how to drive shit, there's cars everywhere. Yes, that's um, uncon- unconscious incompetence. Yeah, we were unconscious about that. Now we're incompetent, we realize. And as we start driving more and more, it becomes conscience incompetence. We're very, very aware I might hurt someone. <laughs> I'm very very aware and I'm stalling the car I'm clutching and doing everything and then we start practicing consistently and we build confidence so that becomes conscious competence mm. and then you get to the point where you've driven a car for years and you don't even need to think about it. you can honk the horn turn indicate and so forth that becomes unconscious competence so you reprogram yourself from not being able to drive to being able to drive, you've reprogrammed your unconscious mind so you don't need to keep on focusing on that. And with everything in life, we're unconscious with something, we can learn and reprogram ourselves by creating the habits and the belief systems to become the version of ourselves, do the, the behavior that we want to do until it becomes unconscious, but in the right way, unconscious competence. So that's the four stages of learning. So you know, whatever you want to achieve in life, you know. Public speaking, for example, you and I are both in Toastmasters. We do public speaking or you know, sales negotiation, um, running a business, inspiring people, getting the best out of your family. I mean, you're always in sales. If you're a parent, you're selling to your children to go to bed. <laughs> you're, you're always selling. So when you first start selling and you think, oh, crap, I'm not good at this, or maybe I don't enjoy doing this, that's a belief system. Right. So first work on the belief system, and then everything else will change. And you can create a new belief system and get the results. And as long as you keep on doing it, it becomes unconscious competence. Now, I used to be a a negative person and I'm not now. So how did that happen? Well, first of all, is by taking responsibility, owning up. Once you start looking and exploring, you find out, I would find I was unconsciously incompetent at appreciating things. And then through meditation, you know, if anyone here is skeptical about meditation, there is signs of what meditation does to us. So if if we live a stressful life, every single moment you go about being stressed and angry, your body releases chemicals called cortisol. Now, cortisol makes you fat, lazy, stupid, bald, diminishes your sex drive, makes you flabby, and a heart attack. Is that the life you want? Now, if you instead decide to live a world of gratitude, and that's one thing you do with meditation, you learn to be grateful for what you have and grateful for others. What does that do? That releases serotonin and oxytocin and wonderful chemicals which make you happy, youthful, leaner, greater muscle definition, lower fat, you know, good orgasms. And you know, who doesn't want those? And generally a better balanced life. So do you want to be stressed or do you want to be happy? It's your choice. And you can only do that if you start creating those thoughts. And that's through the application of meditation until 
that type of a lifestyle and behavior becomes your unconscious competence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I like that process. I like the way you put that process and broke it down from unconscious incompetence to unconscious, unconscious. competence. Yes. Yeah. Because it has to be conscious before it becomes unconscious. Yeah. Yes. And that goes to the saying we've both, you know, it's been shared to us by our, our mentor, uh, you know, yeah. until you make the unconscious conscious, yeah. it will direct you through life and you'll call it fate. Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard it in the way that you've explained it there. And that's actually mm-hmm. given me a, a bit of a light bulb moment as mm-hmm. well. So um, it's, you just have to hear things enough time in different ways to, for things to sink and that was kind of one of those sinking moments for me so hopefully anyone else is watching gets that mm-hmm. that as well because uh, the context was important mm-hmm. as well um a question mm-hmm. uh, more more so like a question i genuinely have is i was told and i've been told this in different ways a few times that i don't appreciate what i've created in terms of success, mm-hmm. uh, lifestyle, success, lifestyle, um, and and just general, gen, generally in my life and business, and etc. Whatever you call success, whatever your definition is, but sure. people have told me that. How do I become maybe more grateful and receiving for what I for what I've created? I, I we've done a few of these processes at Super Genius, but. It's possibly an area where I'm la- I'm I'm slacking in or I'm not doing as well. And so, uh, sounds like you're you've done a lot of practice on gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would like to know your perspective on that. Like, what? How could I be more grateful for myself? And and how can I um, recognize what I've achieved a wee bit better? Sure. Okay. So there there are quite a few areas around this, Ben. So first of all. What we have to, you know, if you're open to the, uh, this idea, everybody is right. Whatever anybody says is always from their perspective. Yeah. We only see things the way we are, not the way they are. So when someone is giving you that feedback and telling you, Ben, you should be more grateful for what you've achieved in your life. It's because they're comparing themselves to you and saying, I wish I had that. I don't have this. You have that. And if I had what you have been, I would be more grateful. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's one aspect. Now, um, you know, definitely be grateful for what you have, have in life. You know, as I shared earlier on, we, we see the science behind it, how it benefits you. And with that said, we have to understand, you know, what is, what is your purpose in life? We all have one of these, a unique thumbprint. Mm-hmm. You know, something makes you, Ben, something makes me. And whatever is in your thumbprint is leading you towards your desires, and as human beings, if, you know, if we didn't have desire, we wouldn't exist now. We would have never left that cave. We would just stay in bed all day long until we die. Yeah. So we have a desire. And your desire may be very different from someone else's. So you know, it's a very interesting question. It is subjective. And going back to what I said at the start, what does this mean for me? What can I learn from this? And what does this mean for me? So if someone gives you that feedback, what does it mean? Well, do you have the same drive as they do? Do you have the same desires as they do? Yes? No? You go weigh that up have that gratitude by all means. But if you're too dependent on the thoughts of others, mm. that can stifle you from your own growth and creation. It's, you know, we're very blessed to get feedback from others and that helps us to grow and helps us to see things from a different perspective, but ultimately be the master of your own destiny and go for what you want. So that's the one side of understanding. Then the next side is actually, look, if you identify, I would like to have, more gratitude okay so that's a different aspect and that should be for someone hopefully who's conscious that they don't have enough gratitude so again we'll talk about mindset and belief here so what creates that mindset what creates that belief and usually again that is a belief system and it's our environmental conditioning we grew up in the western world where the stimulus is bombarding us to want to achieve more you know our parents are telling us from their you know, 70 year old generational programming, at least get a car, get a job, get a career, get a degree and so forth. So we're, from an early age, we're told to go for more, more, more and more. So it's never enough. So someone might have had a different environment where they were told, if you got this, you're great. I mean, for my mom, if I have a job in a local shop, she would be delighted. She would get to see me. 
but that's not the life I want. I have my thumbprint. You know, I want to make an impact on the world. Yeah. So I'm going out there and doing more. And we can be very guilty, like I can become very guilty of not being grateful in the past for what I've achieved and wanting more and more. Because what we're doing is we're measuring the gap between us and our end result. And that's why we don't have enough gratitude. So if you find that's yourself, what you then have to do is flip it around and stand right now, take stock and look back at where you've come from to what you have achieved and reverse engineer the gap. And that's when you have gratitude. You know, I, you know, I would struggle for, you know, I struggle to feed myself. Now I can go out and eat anyone I want. I'm so grateful. Every single time I was in a restaurant, the first thing I'd do is I'd look at the right hand side. <laughs> now I can look at the left hand side. I'm so grateful that the universe has given me the opportunity to be here. So reverse engineer your focus without forgetting what you did to get here and you can get more if you keep driving so yeah. don't pay yourself lip service either yeah does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah that makes sense yeah that's it's, uh i guess i did ask you two questions molded into the ones you've kind of answered the, the two separately and that's the second's more about uh how to how to have gratitude for like where we are mm -hmm. yeah um brainwaves <laughs> uh, not not just brainwaves but like i again i think it's important that i give a bit of context about these why i have these questions so i know that people are watching and probably interested and in learn more about the, this area so i'm gonna ask uh, out of genuine questions i i have so sure. more of a discussion in a way so i've tried dr joe dispenza's uh, meditations I've, mm -hmm. uh, since we spoke about gamma, which is the highest brainwave that we can get into, which is like the Buddhist monks can can uh, can reach this sort of level of consciousness when when yes. meditated for such a long time, uh, consistently, and mm -hmm. they're in a constant state of consciousness. So I've tried meditation. I've had these experiences. As sometimes, sometimes I don't get it, but I ha I now under I now know what it is. I've got the the want for it more now. Um, so I've gone, I've come from beta, which is the, the state where everyone watching right now is in right now. We're all mm -hmm. in beta right now, yeah. which is our brainwaves. Yeah. Our brainwaves are constantly in, in beta. When you go into meditation, you move from beta into delta, which is a relaxed state. Yeah. It can, you, you can also go to, into theta. Theta. Is, this is, that's pretty much between the waking stage and drowsy stage okay that's that's where that's where creation and intuition and imagination is that's, okay. you know when you wake up in the morning and you're dreaming you're in theta okay yeah well i guess the meditation it took it takes me from like one to the to the i think delta yeah. and delta is like for me it feels like i went into a black hole yeah. and when i do that and uh it's a great feeling because almost when you come out of that and go back and you're moving back in from the relaxed state into that's what hypnosis is, isn't it? It is. It yes. is. So med meditation and hypnosis are, are connected. So when, usually when you are having hypnosis, it's, it's a guided meditation. And yeah. you know, I, I'm so I haven't shared. I, I'm an NLP master practitioner. I am an NLP hip, hypnotherapist as well. Oh yeah, and I, I know. I did my research. <laughs> <laughs> and that you know, sometimes we have to pull those tools out, and nobody can hypnotize you to cluck like a chicken unless you're willing to do that. So what you see on TV is staged. Uh, there's usually an audience about 500 people, yeah. exaggeration, maybe at least you know 80 people, and the hypnotherapist is profiling the audience to find who is the most susceptible and suggestible and that's the person they bring on stage so everyone starts seeing them thinks oh that can happen then i'm going to buy into it but you know kind of long story short nobody can talk into doing something you don't want to do and hypnotherapy yeah, is a guided me. meditation yeah right okay because that's like even like ryan talked about how he ate an onion yeah um, and how other people do they would be made to do funny stuff on the stage. Yeah. How does that happen? It, it doesn't happen or? 
It it does happen. It does happen. Right. They, there's enough trust. They're relaxed enough, and there's enough belief. Right. I see. I see. So they're fine with it. But you couldn't force someone to do that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, my my teacher, you know, he he joked about uh, doing a trick where you can get someone to believe their hand is stuck to the table. Right. And you know, doesn't matter how much they try and force themselves, they can't lift their hand up. And you'd have seen, you know. If, if you look up Darren Brown, you can see him uh, putting pins through people and so forth and telling the brain there's no pain there. So w- when we have pain, that's just a nerve ending creating uh, a stimulus in our brain. We don't feel the pain in our arm. We're feeling it in our brain. Yeah. So it's the messages that you give to your brain. And if you can use hypnotherapy and meditation to create new messages mm-hmm. and put that to the rest of your body and then program your behavior. But um, yeah, back to uh, the, the, the waves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll bring up something here. Um, so when I did that meditation, uh, it, it, it puts me into that relaxed state, which is what's known as what, what a hypnotherapist can do, which is what you can do uh, for mm-hmm. people. And it's that technically a guided meditation to put them into us, that, that state of uh, delta. Um, <laughs> so I, that's my understanding of it at the moment i have taken some of joe Dispenza's advice to then ask yourself those questions of who do i want to be um mm-hmm. and 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 reprogramming things in that way like and, and planting it so we we both believe that our mind creates a reality yeah. our thoughts become matter and reality and um what i guess what i'm asking you is brain waves like what have you been to uh, the other states that I've maybe not experienced yet? So, um, and and ex- and could you explain what I've experienced in Delta when I, I talked about when I feel like I'm and I, I I'm I become light or I am in a black hole? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just talk about I, that. I, I'm, I'm no expert in this area by any means. Um, when we go through the different stages, we do have different experiences. You know. The, the world that we live in, uh, it's, it's based on our, you know, our perception is based on our sensory stimulus. So that could be visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory, so taste, sound, and, and smell as well. So if we think that, you know, if you get pricked in the finger and you can block out that pain based on the belief you create, and that's coming from your brain wave, and your brain waves are energy. If we ever look at, um, Brainwave recordings, it's just energy, right? It looks like a, a frequency. And you hear everything is vibration, everything is frequency, everything is energy, everything is just waves. So your brainwave is energy that is being created as well. So energy manifests itself and creates the world that you, you want. Now, the different levels of energy is, for me, my perception is how much connection we have with ourselves. I've got some magic going on here. Yeah. So how much energy uh, connection we have with ourselves. And when we connect with ourselves, that's when we're going to create what we want. Right. Because if your vision comes from inside you, not from outside. Your desires come from inside you, not from outside. You may see something, experience something. There's a, there's a catalyst, but for you to go on that journey, that's coming from yourself. So for you to be able to better create that, realistically create that you have to increase your energy to a creator level energy instead of just a a living level energy Mm. instead of just being in alpha or beta stage and that's the energy of just going around being awake and functioning to creation and that's going to be uh delta or theta yeah so the the most you know wonderful creators are children and you've, you, you're, you're blessed with children, Ben, and, you, and I'm sure you come home and you find that, you know, you, your children have created something, they've drawn something, there's something magic happening all the time because their brains consistently are at those levels, theta and delta. At the ages of, you know, going up to the age of five, we're consistently at that. And our environment, our academic system teaches us to be out of that and to be in alpha and beta. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in that level, you know, when you're childlike and you play, you imagine and you create magic. Yeah, I'm just showing everyone if you can see. Can you see that yeah. shared screen? Yeah. Yes, hopefully. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, just so people can see 
um, yeah. what we're talking about in the brain yeah. waves because I, for me, I'm a visual person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I totally, I totally understand what you mean. Like the, the children, I've heard it put in, I think, um, Deepak Chopra's words, we're seeds of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And when we're born, we, we don't have that consciousness that we have today. Mm -hmm. We're waking up almost from, yeah. from being yeah. from birth. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was a very good way to put it. Yeah. Um, but I just want everyone to see that on the screen, like the, the sort of what we're talking about in all these different mm -hmm. states. And you can see the, the, the drowsiness state of theta where it's, you said wake it when we wake up and, and when we're that's back. right yeah yeah so usually when we dream i believe our dreams are telling us things and when we dream that's between when we wake and are asleep and yeah. that's the same um energy level that's the same brain waves as when you're hypnotized because when you're at that level what happens is your critical faculty is suspended so to explain your critical to faculty imagine an egg and half of the egg is your conscious, logical, rational mind. And that's the bottom half. And the top half is your creative mind because you have to suspend your disbelief to buy into creative things. So for example, if you go and watch the Avengers and you're at the bottom half, the critical mind, well, that's just nonsense. No one's you know, going to different universes. Yeah. If you can suspend your disbelief, you're at the top half of the egg. That's where you're open to suggestions. So when you're in theta, both of these two stages overlap. Your critical faculty is totally suspended, so your dreams can become your reality. Yeah. Because you're connecting the dream world and the real world together. Yeah. So we're aware of that. And then we know if we're in alpha, we are about. If we're in beta, we're about. We know our brains can go through these different levels, these different waves. So how can we purposefully cultivate brain waves are thoughts to be in certain brain waves, which is more likely to get the result that we want. So, you know, to, to give you a metaphor, if there's five roads for you to get from Scotland to London, and you know, one of those roads is going to give you the fastest and quickest results, would you not want to take that? If you could, yeah. that's you driving with purpose instead of stumbling through. Yeah. So it's the same with your brain waves. If you can find the path which will allow you to get your end result quicker and be on purpose. We do not want that as well. And that's why I invest into an EEG machine. That's why I invest into meditation and many other people do that. And I'm by no means I'm an expert in this, mm -hmm. but I can talk firsthand about how it's changed my life by connecting with myself and, you know, pushing my brain waves, not pushing, but re um, receiving the ability to think, and live with higher brain waves going along. And that's by exercising it. Everything, you no, know, it's, it's like muscles you need to exercise and you build up the ability to do that. Same thing with meditation. Some people find it really hard at the start, but as you keep on doing it, you increase the ability to do that and you increase the ability yeah. to tap into theta or to gamma as well. And, and gamma is the one where, well, you know, we measured monks. So, those who live with the highest level of gratitude and compassion mm -hmm. are consistently in gamma on a daily basis. So nothing okay. is a problem. Now imagine a life like that where nothing is a problem and you're at peace all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that practical? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, that's where I, I, you know, I agree with that. It depends on this again. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like uh, you don't know until you're there though, do you? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it just depends on that. It depends. And then, you know, once you get there, if that's not the life you want to have, then that's fine. At least that's a, uh, that's a golf club in your set. So yeah. if you want to play that game, you can play that. And if you need to play the, you know, I, I don't do a lot of golf, but you know, if you, if you need the, if you need to pitch or whatever it is, you can get that club out and play that yeah. game, yeah. but you'll only have that if you've trained those muscles up, trained that ability up. Yeah. And have you, have you experienced, uh, or based on the machine, have you got into gamma before? On the machine, I, it's hard to tell because I have a very rudimentary device. I mean, a, a good right. EEG machine is about 10,000 pounds. Right. What, okay, what so, does that stand for? 
Um, I think it's Echo Electrogram. I mean, we can we could probably Google it, but that's the machine that measures your brain waves, EEG yeah. machines. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, electro into palogram there we are hey okay <laughs> that's that's what we that's what we do we measure the brain here. so you know i have an app that i strap around my head every morning when i meditate and um, it measures my brain waves sorry to interrupt do you do it do you meditate daily i do meditate daily i you know th there are periods where i have breaks okay but i find the the best version of myself that turns up in the world is when i meditate daily so the best version of myself meditates in the morning um, in terms of how I want to be. And the end of the day, I reflect so still meditation, but I'm reflecting on the day and um, gratitude for my experiences. So th that's how you live in a purpose. You wake up, decide who you want to be, what do you want to achieve and what do you want to focus on through passion. And at the end of the day, what have I achieved? What am I grateful for? What have I learned from today? How can I be better tomorrow? So remember I, I said our thoughts create those chemicals. Yeah. So I would much rather go to bed with my body full of oxytonin, serotonin than having cortisol. I can choose to poison myself before I go to sleep or I can choose to love myself before I go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. That's why they say never go to bed angry. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's really... What's the, what's the difference between alpha and theta? Uh, well, theater is your drowsy state, the one where you're just waking up. So imagine, like, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse on, the, on your screen. Uh, Delta is us asleep, dreaming, uh, deep sleep, lucid dreaming, maybe. No, so deep sleep. Um, theater is lucid dreaming. Um, de um, daydreams as well. So children, you find they daydream a lot, and yeah. that's in theater. Alpha is when you've just woken up. You're not running around. You're not frantic. This is before your 7 o'clock coffee, before you do the school run. Beta is you, you, your day-to-day -day work, getting on the bus, traveling, driving, thinking, problem solving, doing your SEO projects. You and I right now having this uh, live recording. Yeah, yeah. It's more sort of logical uh, mm -hmm. into your logical mind, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, that's, yeah that's a good way. So th these two are your left brain and this is going to be your right brain. And okay. gamma is going to be a bit of both. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I, I've never, I've, I'm discover again, I'm in discovery and I understand alpha mm -hmm. uh, and I understand that's a good state, like waking up in the morning. That's the best thing to meditate. That's why people meditate in the morning mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're already in a, a state of meditation in a way and you yeah. can go even deeper into that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So ideally you want to be on the edge of falling asleep when you're meditating. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're, you're between theta and alpha. Yes. Yeah. And uh, like, I, I think that people will find this interesting because of, I know so many people have tried and think they've failed at meditation, which they, which they probably have if they, if they've given it up, because if they experience what you and I have experienced, mm -hmm. I've only experienced it in moments, but it sounds like you're experiencing it daily. And I really want to build the practice as well. Mm -hmm. Um, now that I, I can see the promise, um, mm -hmm. of meditation, but mm -hmm. it's possibly because they're not trying it. They're trying at midday when they're, you know what I mean? Like out and about. So yeah, um, it's, it's, it's different things for different people. What, what yeah. I'll say is <clears throat> with meditation, there's a lot of, you know, again, with everything I share, you know, this is not gospel. This is just what I bind to what I believe and everything is a belief system. But I believe a lot of us are reading outdated material and guidance regarding meditation. Okay. You know, meditation is a form of practice. And a lot of that comes from an ancient time where we did not have the day to day routine or the lifestyle we have now. So, you know, it's not practical for all of us to spend two hours underneath a tree every single day. So how do we find a form of meditation, which works for us uh, in this day and age? And it's eight, you know, it is to, to learn to be the best version of ourselves, but it's also to transcend who we are and what we're doing today. So it's, you know, if you find you can't silence your mind, forgive yourself. Where I see people going wrong with meditation is they start beating themselves up right. and then they say, it's not for me. So, you know, find what works for you. Experiment at the different times. If it's in the morning, if afternoon, evening, 
if it's at twilight, if it's at dusk, whatever it is, right. just get into the habit of doing it. And just like yeah. going to the gym yeah. and build that muscle, build that muscle, build that ability, and then find out and create, like we went said earlier on, unconscious competence, the ability to do it and tap into it. You know, what, what I will say about Gao, the most beautiful, beautiful most beautiful state i've had with meditation it's um you know it's incomprehensible where i felt like everything in the world had slowed down mm -hmm. everything um and that is possible with meditation with your brain waves certain people experience some of that uh near death experiences where you feel like everything just slows down and what's happening is that your brain is processing more data than normal our brain on average and in one second is um, receiving the entire avengers movie in in 4K high definition in one second. That's a lot of data for us to receive and process. So to help us survive, it chunks that all down into seven and a half bits. Not, not bits of data, but um, segments. And then our belief systems define meanings based around our, our experiences in the past mm -hmm. um, and so forth. But we can open up our brain to receive more so you will see some people, you just say, look, they're just so, they're just so spot on. So they're so hyper-focused and so forth. That's usually, they just, they just learned to receive more data and process more data. Is that why the gamma brain waves are up and down, like right next to each other? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> possibly, yeah. possibly. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, um, that's really interesting. So <laughs> I think uh, we've went through down that rabbit hole. Um, very briefly, I think, because we've been, uh, I, I try and keep these interviews as short as possible. Sure. Um, in terms of like, we talked about investing and uh, when, we were, when we were down there, and I found that really fascinating, like what you're doing with uh, all the different bank cards and uh, with your finances, like mm -hmm. extremely financially literally i think i i, I would describe you <laughs> and there's a lot i've got to learn from from you and just uh, uh, what you've learned so on that topic what would you share with someone at my stage uh, that mm -hmm. that's wanting to understand what you understand <laughs> i know that's a very broad question Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's a very broad question, and I need to understand your situation a lot more. Um, uh, because, you know, it's, it's, everything has a purpose and the end goal. So what, what is it that you'd be looking to achieve is, is your end goal? So you might say, I want to, uh, you know, I want to scale my business. So that's a very different conversation to I want to buy a house. But what, whatever you are aiming for, what we have to, you have to identify, first of all, uh, what are your mean goals and your absolute goals? The absolute goal is this is the end result. And your mean yeah. goals are these are the things I'm going to do to get my end result. So, for, for, for example, we grew up in an environment where we think, you know, I'm going to be happy. That's my, my end goal. So I have to have a house, get married, have children. Then I'll be happy. Those are all our mean goals to get the absolute goal. Well, look, you can just be happy straight away, like those third world families um, that I've seen in the villages in Bangladesh, if that's what you want. Um, money is an illusion. It's all energy. What we're doing is we're transferring energy. So, you know, this paper, you know, all of this, it saves on it. I promise to pay the bearer. I don't know if you see it. Yeah, I promise there's a line up that I promise to pay the bearer. If you ever yeah. look at notes in any country, I promise to pay the bearer of this, the sum of 10 pounds. This is an IOU. It's worthless. No disrespect. But it's not, there, there is no tangible value to it aside from what we define it to be. Yeah. So once you understand that it's an IOU, how do I collect more favors? We collect more favors by giving more value. Yeah. So you can give value for your business or you can give value by helping people to change their lives as a coach or teaching them how to be more financially literate and be rewarded for that. Um, you know, I'm conscious of our time, but you know, what I had shared with you is that every single transaction I make, and you know, this, I always make sure I get paid back for that. 
Yeah. Instead of being dependent on the system, I make sure the system is always rewarding me. So cash is worthless. I only have this because, uh, you know, I've my birthday is on Christmas Day. Uh, my mother asked me to say, take some money out of a cash machine, which she then gave me. So she's gifted me my own money. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, everything that I buy is always on a card because I make sure I get rewarded for that. And then if, if I'm not getting rewarded for that, I am getting cash back. I'm always looking at negotiating and getting things for free. Um, it's about making the system work for you. Just because we're born in the system and live in the system doesn't mean we have to follow all the rules of the system. We do have to follow the rules, but there are other people playing at a higher rate than us, at a higher level than us, follow the rules. So what rules are they focusing on? What are the rules the rich are focusing on that we don't focus on? You know, there's so many people who want a, a nice car, but if you look at the wealthiest 5% of the world, I mean, Warren Buffett drives a 20-year-old Chrysler. Jeff Bezos drives a, you know, a 10, 15-year-old car. Mark Zuckerberg, you know. So what I'm getting at is mm -hmm. don't waste your money on frivolous things. So I would say to your, your listeners right now, yeah. get that last month's bank statement. Get two markers out, one green, one red, and go through every single transaction. What was a necessity? And what was a want? And you'll find that you spend so much money on things that you just wanted, but you did not need. And then you become aware of your financial habits. Going back to what I said at the start, what does this, you know, what does this mean from, for me? And what do I want from this? So you look at your bank account. What does this mean for me? And what do I want to do with this? Well, if, I'm, if I look at my bank statement and there's a lot of reds, it means I'm spending money I don't have. I'm living beyond my means or I'm spending like a child. A lot of people I find are spending like a child. You know, I've, I've got friends and clients who work in the city, very successful jobs, and they're still living hand to mouth. How is that possible? Because yeah. they're unconscious about their financial behavior. So the first thing is become conscious about your financial behavior. And the quickest way, as I said, is going for the bank statement and then creating a plan. And yeah. once you start creating that plan, then you can look at how do I create additional lines of revenue, additional income streams. Um, and you, you and I talked about investing. That's on a higher level. But the first thing is learn how to pay the least amount of money, reduce your taxes ethically, ethically, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and um, then get rewarded well for what you do and that comes down to giving more value as well um th those those are the fundamentals once you've got that and you've built your pots of money then reinvest that because the only thing that you can never get back is your time you can always make more money but you never get back your time so if you learn how to make your money work for you essentially these can be little little, little ben langs going out into the world and working for you that's going to make you more money. You can't multiply your time, but you can multiply your money by making your money work for you. And, you know, from learning how to make money to save money, then I went into investing because saving in banks is pointless. Yeah. Going back to make the system work for you. Don't work for the system. Yeah. 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 That's a, a good summary <laughs> of what we basically. I, I'm, I'm happy to do, you know, more than happy to do a, a podcast in the future yeah, yeah. Uh, focusing just on the money part because yeah. I yeah. noticed from all the conversations that I have about I'd say a good 40% their eyes just you know blow up with the money part especially last year how I you know I travel for free you know we yeah. spoke two years ago I had seven holidays um, and you know this isn't skimping it's just making my air miles work for me how to get all of this from your day-to-day -day transactions yeah. and so forth yeah well, I'm sure we'll definitely do another one of these and, and we can, like you say, have a focus on um, maybe get the audience to tell us what they would like us to focus on. And, mm -hmm. uh, so in the comments, please leave uh, what you would like us to focus on and we'll do it again because I, I could I could listen to you for longer as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think that's all we've got time for. At the moment, um, it's getting dark. I've got the dog to walk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thanks a lot for, for coming on, Naz. Um, thanks really for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate your time and uh, the 
I've I've learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else that's joined us has, has learned a lot. Um, Ver, Ver did put a comment in the over on Facebook, so if you want to check that, maybe okay. you could you can check the comments and and reply there, and we can reply to everyone who's come on Facebook because we're on. Uh, zoom we can't actually see facebook just now so i'm trying right. out something new <laughs> so yeah I, I, I look forward happy birthday when it comes on christmas day <laughs> yeah. and, uh, thank you thanks again yeah thank thank you ben and uh, yeah well, wonderful christmas t- to your family and start to the new year and yeah i wish 2020 is amazing for you and, and, and everyone who's watching us today yeah thank you uh, bye just now everyone thanks for joining us let us know if you watch this on the replay and just put in comment hashtag replay if you watch the replay. Bye just now. Bye bye.